All right, we're gonna make this quick so that way my phone doesn't heat up. But this is gonna be a little bit different type of a video. Um, I just got some new species in and I'm gonna show you um, how I'm gonna set them up. Uh, sucks a little bit because half of them arrived dead um, and they were kind of expensive. But you know what? We're gonna make do with what we have and see if the seller responds back to me and all that. But um, whatever. So we have one tub. This is going to be for blonde rubber duckies. Um, I already have the regular type of ru rubber duckies, but I ordered the blonde this time. And this is going to be for um, the dwarf striped gray. Um, I can't remember the scientific name off the back, off the top of my head, but I'll put it in the video title or description, whatever. Um, but first off, for what we're going to do for these, heat moss. Um, that's going to be really important for holding in moisture. More on this side. Just organic, plain peat moss, no fertilizer, no nothing else added to it. Next is uh, you can use compost, but this time I'm using worm castings. Um, very nutrient rich, good for isopods, especially the tropical species. Very, very rich stuff. Um, next is going to be leaves. Look at the leaves. Okay. Now, for the leaves, you're going to want a bed of leaves on top of the substrate, but you also want to mix a bunch into the substrate, especially for the burrowing species, which um, both the duckies and um, the dwarf striped grays are both kind of burrowing species. They both kind of live in the substrate. Um, so having that in there is real important. They'll make little birthing chambers and tunnels. And having plenty of uh, leaf litter in there important for them. Add some more worm castings. Sorry about that. It took longer than I thought it would. Heat moss. Mix that all in. Um, next is kind of optional, but I like it in a lot of my enclosures, is uh, limestone. It's uh, excellent for calcium. They can live on it, under it, provide shelter and whatnot. Um, I'm going to add some bigger pieces here in a second, as I have smaller ones. Um, but I'll add the bigger ones once I'm done with you know, the filming and stuff. Next is rotting wood or just plain you know, hardwood. It doesn't have to be rotting, but they definitely like it rotting. Or at least a little bit rotted. 
you can get some nice um, lichen or moss on there too. They really appreciate that. Let's see if that's fine. Here's some more Good size pieces. For the duckies, um, I would recommend some long fiber sphagnum moss. I don't have any on me right now, so I'm going to add it later. It should be fine. Now, both of these are tropical species. Um, the duckies are from Thailand. And um, I don't know where the dwarf striped greys are from, but I know they're tropical. So for both of these species, I'm gonna keep, um, well, for uh, the dwarf striped greys, I'm gonna keep pretty much the whole thing damp because I know that's what they like. Um, the duckies, there's a lot of debate on if they like it um, more on the dry side or more on the wet side. Um, I'm still experimenting myself, so I don't know yet. But we'll see. We'll find out what we do here. Experiment. Thing that's going to be important for your isopods, um, any species of isopods, is a source of calcium. Um, I like to use cuddle bone. This is the, the artificial cuddle bone. Um, I'm trying this stuff out. Um, if you want to stick to what's safe and what works is the natural cuddle bone. Um, but I'm trying this stuff, just giving it a shot, seeing how I like it. If I don't, I'll switch to something else. It's no big deal. Um, I also recommend um, getting crushed up eggshells and uh, mixing that onto the top layer of substrate. Um, I don't eat eggs, so I don't really have any right now. I rely on my roommates for that, and they haven't made eggs in a little while, so I'm still waiting on them for that. But uh, I like to crush it up into small pieces, just put a few in there, scatter it about. Um, it's really important for their exoskeleton molting and whatnot. Um, ventilation, both of these species don't really need a lot of ventilation, so I'm not going to have a lot of ventilation. Um, I might as well show you them. Let's see if we can get it into camera proper. So there's one of the blonde duckies amongst his dead comrades that unfortunately didn't make it through the trip. Um, it really sucks. But um, we'll see what happens with the seller. Um, in my opinion, he didn't pack very well, like at all. So that would be why I suspect they died in transit. So we'll wait for him to respond to me, and hopefully we can get it worked out. Um, because I paid a lot of money for them. <laughs> it's basically the reason why. Um, ventilation, I think maybe I already talked about ventilation, but these guys don't need a lot of it. Um, both of these are going to have lids. I'm going to poke like a few like holes, maybe like half the size of a dime, maybe like 15 or 20 on the duckies and maybe like 10 on this. Um, they don't need a whole lot of ventilation because um, they prefer it more on the humid side. So yeah. I'm going to place our duckies in there, or at least the ones that are alive. Now the blonde duckies are um, basically from a different cave in Thailand than the standard duckies. Uh, they're not like a morph or anything. Um, for a while I was under the impression that they were a morph, but I found out they are not. And these are the striped grays. Um, they're too small. I need a macro lens for you guys to be able to see them. So I'm not even going to attempt. There's only a handful of them in here. 
drop them in there. Let's see, if I put a few on here. Man, they are very small. They are definitely dwarfs. Very, very tiny. But, uh, yeah, this is more or less how to set them up. Uh, I'm going to give them some pumpkin for uh, food, something to munch on. Um, both of these also enjoy fish flakes from what I'm told. I'm going to give them that as well. But, uh, yeah. And this should, uh, this particular setup, the only real difference between keeping the different species of isopods is some of them like different types of leaf litter than others, but they'll all pretty much eat oak. Um, and the amount of moisture or ventilation they have, like some of the Spanish species like a lot of ventilation um, and very little moisture. Um, but these are from Thailand and I don't know where the dwarf varieties are from. But uh, yeah, they like it pretty humid. So yeah, there we go. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to ask. Add some limestone to this one, because why not?